All right, today we're going to look at predicting with linear models. Our vocab for today, today is a best fitting line, and a best fitting line is a line that is best represented, best represents a trend in data or in points. Okay, and the next thing we're going to take a look, a look at is linear interpolation. It's using a line or its equation to approximate values between two known points. And then we have a linear extrapolation, where we will be using a line or its equation to approximate values outside the range of known points. All right, the first problem we're going to take a look at today is where we're going to find the equation of a best fitting line for the data. So our steps are listed out below. First, you plot the points. Second, you draw a straight line representing the points. And third, you're going to find the equation of the line. So for this particular example, the, plot, the points are already plotted, and the line best representing the points is already drawn. So we're going to write this in y equals mx plus b form, so in slope-intercept form. So we need to identify our y-intercept and our slope. So our y-intercept, the point where we cross the y-axis, is 1, 2. So b will equal 2. And then when you're finding slope, you're going to be using the same method that we looked at in class. We're going to find two points on your line that cross at the grid points. So I'm going to use this ordered pair, which is 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7. And then I'm going to use my y-intercept of 0, 2. So I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units. So I rise 9, and then I run 1, 2, 3. And since I'm going to the left, that will be negative 3. Now this simplifies down to negative 3, so my slope is negative 3. So the equation of that line is y equals negative 3x plus 2. All right, the next problem we're going to take a look at is we're already given the points that are plotted there. And just by looking at the shape, we can see we're going to have a positive slope since it's rising in the first quadrant to the right. So you want to draw a line that touches as many points as we can with allowing points that it doesn't touch sort of the same amount. So we have two points below the line and then two points above the line, and then we're touching the other points, and this one's close as well. And once again, we're drawing that line to fully extend the parameters of the graph of the coordinate plane. So for this one, once again, we're using the form y equals mx plus b. We need to find our slope, and we need to find our y-intercept. So when we're looking for that slope, we want to take a look at points that fall on that grid, and that will just make it easier to identify the slope. So we have a point right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or excuse me, negative 7. So we have negative 7, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 7, negative 7. And then taking a look, we also pass the grid at this point here. So that's negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So our rise is 1, 2, 3. And then we run to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So our slope is 3 over 4. And our y-intercept is the point where our line crosses the y-axis. Here, if we notice, it's not on the exact grid. It's somewhere in between negative 1 and negative 2. Now, it's closer to negative 2 than it is to negative 1. So it's going to be the higher negative 1 values. So we're going to approximate here. So this slope falls about a little more closer to negative 2 than halfway. So we're going to approximate that to be around negative 1.6. So the equation of our line is y equals 3 fourths x minus 1.6. Now to write that as a decimal, we'll have y equals 0.75x minus 1.6. All right, the next equation, we're going to have a negative slope here since our points rise in that second quadrant. So we know our slope needs to be negative. So once again, we're using y equals mx plus b. We need to find m. We need to find b. But our first step, we need to draw the line that best represents those points. 
And so once again, we want to draw a line that hits as many points as we can and leaves about the same points outside of it. And our slope here, once again, we want to find two points. So we hit well on the points. All right, so I'm just moving that so you can see a little better. So we hit well on the points we appeared across here, and then we're very close to that ordered pair there. All right, so our slope, we go up one, two, and then we run one, two. And since we run to the left, it'll be negative. So our slope is about negative 1. And our y-intercept, cross it 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. So our equation is y equals negative x minus 5, which keep in mind we don't have to write that negative 1 since there's an understood 1 to be there. All right, the next equation for the best fitting line. Once again, we have another negative slope, so connect it with the line that best represents. And when you're doing lines to best fit, you may not have the exact same equation as someone else, but that's okay, because um, we all sort of have slightly different interpretations of what that line looks like, but they'll be similar, they'll be very similar. Once again, y equals mx plus b, we need to find the slope, we need to find our y-intercept. Um, so here we can look at our y-intercept, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and it falls a little bit below that, so I'm going to say our y-intercept is negative 3.1. And then we're looking for points where we cross. Here at the bottom right we have a point where we cross cleanly over as well as up here. So we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we rise 5, and then we run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And since we ran to the left, that'll be a negative 8. So our equation is y equals negative 5 eighths x minus 3.1. And one thing we're, you're dealing with slopes that are fractions, it's important that they remain as coefficients. So we don't write it as negative 5x over 8, but we write it as negative 5 eighths times x. So be careful with that. All right, I will see y'all in the morning.